We're ready for something different. If you would, turn your Bibles to the book of Nehemiah, chapter 4. Nehemiah chapter 4, and it's been a number of years, I think, since I have uh, preached from this passage of Scripture. But uh, we're trying to get prepared for revival, so I guess it's time again to make reference to this. Um, leading up to that, you will... If you've read the book of Nehemiah, you know that he was one of those that was in bondage in Babylon, but somehow he had been given a honorable job. His job was the king's cupbearer. He was to bring the king his wine and whatever he chose to drink and so forth. And uh, his brother Hananiah had come and told him about what was going on in Jerusalem in the city of God. And it grieved his heart. And it grieved him so much that he couldn't make a pretense. And the king noticed that he was sad. And he'd never been sad before the king before. He had done his job joyfully before the king. That ought to speak to your heart tonight. Amen. But as he was sad, the king questioned him, why was he so sad? And he told him, he said, the city of Jerusalem lies in waste. It's been torn down. And it lies in waste. And the king gave him permission and provision to go to Jerusalem and to build the walls of the city one more time. But as he went, there's always an adversary trying to detour you on your journey. That's right. There's an old song that says, I've got my mind made up, my foot's on the rock. You know, we need to be established in that fashion. Amen. So we want to begin the reading tonight in chapter 4. If you have your place there, give me a big healthy hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, what do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Listen carefully to the next sentence. Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. And then we turn again in verse 4 to hear the prayer of Nehemiah. Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity, and cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. Amen. But it came to pass that when Sabalat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wroth and conspired all of them together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. And Judah said, The strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed 
and there is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall. And our adversaries said they shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst among them and slay them and cause the work to cease. And it came to pass that when the Jews which dwelt by them came, they said unto us ten times, from all places whence ye shall return unto us, they will be upon you. Therefore said I in the lower places behind the wall, and on the higher places I even set the people after their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. There's a couple of things I wanted to deal with tonight concerning this passage of Scripture. Now, when Nehemiah came, if you've read the chapters before this, when he came to Jerusalem, he went out by night. Mm -hmm. And he viewed the condition of the city. And he saw that the walls were broken down and the gates were burned and it was a horrible mess. But he spoke to the rulers and told them about the favor that God had given him with the king and how he had put it in his heart to build a wall. And they said, so let us build. Hallelujah. That's the kind of people we need today to have Amen. a revival. Those that have said, let us build. Let us do it. Amen. Let's just get to the work. Right. And so they began to build the wall. And of course, when they did, the enemies began to rise up. And they began to do everything they could to deter them. And there's a whole lot in this whole book. And I'm not going to try to preach the whole book. But as they began to try to deter them, they was trying to find ways to hinder, even to the point of coming against them with their armies and with their swords. But Nehemiah knew of their plan, and he prepared himself. I said he prepared himself. Amen. We know what the plan of the enemy is. It is to steal, kill, and destroy. That's right. And so to have a great revival, a great taking back of what the enemy has stolen from us, we must prepare ourselves. That's right. And he prepared himself for the work of the Lord. Now there was a great hindrance. Not only was the enemy there, but some of you have probably seen what damage that a fire does. The stones were broken down. And all that would burn was heaps of ruin and ashes. If you've seen a house that is burnt, most of the time there's just a big mess to clean up. Because they usually, the fire department doesn't let it all burn up. They get, a, get it out in time to leave a mess to clean up in a lot of cases. And I'm not speaking against the fire department. I'm just saying, giving you an example of what it looks like sometimes. And so, Sanballat and Tobiah was saying, what are they going to get out of this heat? What are they going to get out of all this ruin? There is much rubbish Look at your neighbor and say rubbish. I want you to get this tonight. Rubbish. Rubbish. Everybody knows what rubbish is? Mm -hmm. It's all that undesirable stuff that's got to be moved out of the way. That's right. Uh, thank you, Holy Ghost. It's all that stuff as the writer of Hebrews said in chapter 12 after he gave us the faith chapter in 11. He starts out in chapter 12 and he said, Therefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, 
looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Removing the rubbish is like removing weights. That's right. Hmm? Now, I know we sometimes say, There is a difference between weights and sin. But if you don't get rid of your weights, they become sin. That's right. Am I listening to me tonight? Amen. If you don't get rid of your weights, they become sin. That's right. A weight is something that is pulling you down, keeping you from moving as quick as you should be moving, keeping you from doing what you should be doing. It's like, you're carrying all of this load so you can't carry the load that you're supposed to be carrying properly. Yeah. It's like being overloaded with something that is unnecessary. That's right. Hmm? And he said, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And so they said, there is much rubbish. And the enemies are saying, what are they going to get out of this rubbish? But then this rubbish was also the stones. That which was tried by the fire and wouldn't burn. Amen. Uh -huh. Yeah. Such should be some of you. That even though you have been through the fire, you are still useful. Amen. Are you getting that? We've got to get the rubbish out of the way, and then we can put the stones back in place. Oh, I'm talking yes. about having a Holy Thank Ghost revival. Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Get the rubbish out of the way so we can put the stones in place and build the wall again. You see, the wall served as a purpose. Most walls are built to keep out the enemy. For one thing, Mm -hmm. But the walls of Jerusalem were built to set the boundary of the holy place. Mm -hmm. Are you following what I'm saying? Amen. It set the boundary of the holy place. And all things within the temple were to be sanctified and to be holy. That's right. And there was the holy place. The courtyard where the Gentiles came and worshipped. And then there was the most holy place. But all of Zion, all of Jerusalem was to be considered the holy city. Anybody ever heard that term? Mm -hmm. The holy city. Yeah. And the wall was to mark the perimeter of the holy city. And I'm telling you, we need some folks, uh, some stones to put in the wall that will build up that wall and guard the holiness of God. Yeah. And so we can have a Holy Ghost filled revival so that blessing can burst out on the inside. As a matter of fact, it gets so great it can flow over the wall and through the gates. Isaiah saw it coming from under the door. Are you getting this? Mm -hmm. He said in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high lifted up and his train filled the temple. Amen. And he was talking about how the presence of God flowed from under the door. Yeah, that's the kind of revival I want to see. One that goes outside the building, Amen. begins to touch hearts and minds. One that can remove the rubbish and bring forth the stones. Hallelujah. And polish them. Glory. You see, verses 4 and 10 talks about the rubbish now. The burden bearers. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Didn't know I was going to go to a fast one. The burden bearers. They were weary. They were tired. Because there was much rubbish to be removed. That's right. Yeah, they were to be moving stones. Making mortar. They were to be putting the wall together. But first of all, they got to get the rubbish out of the way. That ought to speak to somebody tonight. 
And the burden bearers were getting weary because of the rubbish. And then beside that, the enemy is threatening to kill them. Oh, but Nehemiah is preparing himself and he's preparing those that are working on the wall. And he said, let every man take his sword and gird it on his side. Keep one hand with a weapon and the other hand on the wall to do the work of the Lord. You know, sometimes we got to get a hold of, of that spirit that says, I'm not giving up. I'm fighting for the Lord. Amen. And he said, fight for your Brethren, for your sons and your daughters. My, 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 somebody ought to get something out of this Bless tonight. Uh, let's Lord. remove the rubbish. Uh, yes. Let's run to the fight for our sons and our daughters that are perishing because of all the tricks of the enemy in the world. The enemy said, will they revive the stones? Will they revive the stones? Let me read to you something Peter said. 1 Peter 2 and 5. He said, All ye also as lively stones. We are considered living stones. We're pillars in the kingdom of God, are you listening? Amen. That's your position. You're to be a part of the wall to make up the perimeter of the holy place. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices that is the fruit of your lips giving praise unto God. Acceptable unto God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. You see, Nehemiah, he wasn't afraid. He wasn't confounded. He wasn't moved by the talk of the enemy. He wasn't overwhelmed by the work of removing the rubbish. He knew that in those stones, hallelujah, somebody ought to get with the program tonight. He knew that by moving those stones back in place, by mortaring them together, hallelujah, binding them like we do, like ourselves are bound with the mortar of the word of God. Amen. That binds us together, brings us together, yeah. makes us a spiritual wall in the perimeter of the holy place so that God can freely move Amen. in our midst. <coughs> And they worked on the wall. And you can read, and I'm not going to go through reading all that or even trying to tell you all the different ones. Each person took a section of the wall mm -hmm. with their family and their servants, and they built that section. Somebody else built this section. Somebody else built this section. My, 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 you talk about the unity that was going on Amen. under the hand of Nehemiah and Almighty God. There was something happening. The holy place was having the perimeter built back. Glory to God. Because people had a mind to work. And this great wall was completed. If you read on past this, in 152 days. Amen. It was so amazing that the enemies couldn't stand it. They were astonished. and They didn't know what to do about it. They tried everything to hinder it. I tell you, I wish we could have a Holy Ghost revival. Amen. That the devil would just be so flusterated. He wouldn't know what to try to do to hinder it. Glory to God that the power of God would move in our midst right. and the glory yes. of God would fill the house and flow out from underneath the door. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. We need to remove the rubbish. Yeah. Don't get weary. You know, sometimes as burden bearers,
We're in human bodies, so we get tired. And yes, your health does sometimes hinder your spirituality. I have had pain so bad that I couldn't concentrate to pray. I needed somebody else to intercede for me. Anybody know anything about what I'm talking about? Yes. Amen. But sometimes the burden bearers get tired. Lord, I've prayed and I've prayed and I've prayed and I've prayed and I've prayed. And I really don't see anything happen. But they that wait upon the Lord, shall he renew shall renew their strength. strength. Hallelujah. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Oh, they shall thank you, walk Lord. and thank not you, faint. I'm here to tell thank you, you Jesus. when it looks like he's four days late, he's right on time. Amen. Glory to God. You see, but they were of a mind to work. And in 152 days, they finished the wall. Oh, the enemy stood back astonished. How are they going to revive the stones out of this rubbish? By the mighty hand of God. Amen. The same way we're going to have that type of revival is by the mighty hand of God. Mm -hmm. What is our part? To seek God with all of our hearts. That's right. To seek God with all of our hearts. To have that made up mind. To pray the prayer like the song that I read and was singing. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, flow through me. Amen. I can't do anything on my own, but use me, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let your spirit rise up in me. Amen. We want the Holy Ghost to move in us, among us, through yes. us. Yes. And touch somebody's life. Yes. Amen. Remove the rubbish. And start laying the stones in place. Yeah. Yeah. You need to build a wall. Your section of the wall. I need to build my section of the wall. We all need to work in unity. That's right. We need to build up the kingdom of God, this spiritual kingdom that we've been given. And allow God to just move mightily. We need to, by faith, thank you, Holy Ghost. We need to, by faith, cast out our fear. Amen. Anybody hear what I said? Amen. See, the opposite of fear is faith. We need to, by faith, cast out our fear. The enemy will come and say, there's too much rubbish there. You'll never get the wall built. You can't get those stones back in place. Well, I'm here to tell you my God can do anything. Amen. And all things are possible to them that believe. Right. Nehemiah was a believer. Yes, he was. And a believer is a doer. Amen. Do something. You can tell me you believe, and a lot of people does. But you know what I'm going to believe that you believe? What I see you do. What I see you do, not just cause you say, well, I've got great faith. When I see you walking in it, when I see you enduring the trial, when I see you hanging on to God, when it looks like you're just not getting much help, I know you're a believer. Huh? You're being faithful to him like he has been to you. Right. Huh? That's a believer. Yes, That's somebody that can build a wall. That's somebody that can brush off the stones, remove the rubbish, and put them in place again. 
Now, did you get that last verse? Take your sword, the word of God, and fight for your brethren. Yeah. For your brethren. The next time somebody's downgrading one of your brothers or sisters, rebuke them. Amen. Fight the good fight of faith. Stamp out gossip. Somebody went to a pastor friend of mine not long ago, started making an accusation against me. Now this is a real friend, a real man of God. And he said, I don't want to hear it. That's my pastor, that's my brother, I don't want to hear it. Amen. Fight for your brethren. Amen. Fight for your sons and your daughters. Get alone with God and agonize in prayer. Plead the blood over them. Declare in the face of Satan that he cannot have them. Even though they're in his camp, you're coming after them. By the power of the Holy Ghost. We're going to revive the stones because we're going to remove the rubbish. Amen. We're going to come together in unity and build that holy perimeter. Yes. Wow. I don't know. Anybody getting a vision of what I'm getting a vision of? Amen. I'm talking about, well, I, I, I can describe it better if I just do it this way. When I pray for people to come to this church, I pray in this manner. Lord, send those that should be at 1411 South 11th Street. From the north, the south, the east, and the west that would come and receive a willing mind to worship you in spirit and in truth and in the beauty of holiness. Amen. I'm not asking him to send some devil. I'm asking him to send people that can be conformed, that will receive the word of God, that can be made stones and pillars in the kingdom of God, that needs the rubbish cleaned off of them. Amen. So they can be useful again as jewels in the kingdom. Removing the rubbish. Polishing the stones. And building the wall. Amen. I shared my heart with you for tonight. 